it is truly my pleasure to welcome you to your online general biology 2 for science majors course or bio 182. My name is Dr. Jared Rathel. Please feel free to just call me Jared like my friends. So I am residential faculty here at Estrella Mountain Community College and I'm the course lead for bio 182. For most of you I will serve as the primary instructor of record for this course. However, some of you may have enrolled in a section of Bio 182 taught by one of our amazing adjuncts. Regardless of your section, please feel free to always reach out to me uh, via email. You can see my email address down below, jared.rathel, that's jared with an O, at astrayamountain.edu or come by and sit down with me, um, come by physically. My office is in Mon 244, that's the second floor. And if you don't find me there, most likely I'm in our lab, Mon 125. That's where we house the menagerie of snakes and lizards and spiders and rodents. So if you ever just wanna come by and check out the animals, please feel free to do so. So my number one priority in teaching this course is you. Um, I want to ensure that I am providing you with the support that you need to grow as scientists in this course. So right now you might be asking yourself, what is Bio 182 all about anyways? So I believe this very short video uh, very much exemplifies what the course is all about. Jaguars have been known to paddle hundreds of yards, crossing open water to get to tropical islands. In captivity, they can dive for more than 30 seconds, even consuming food while they're underwater. With their aquatic skills and powerful bite, Jaguars were able to take on prey their canine rivals couldn't tackle. The caiman, an ancient crocodilian that grows to more than 12 feet long. Their thick skin is protected by an armor of bony plates. For millions of years, caiman had been the apex predator. Then the hunter became the hunted. This extraordinary act of predation was filmed by a tourist in Brazil's Pantanal and has become an internet sensation. It shows what skillful and audacious predators cats can be. That was truly epic, huh? So obviously most folks are going to watch footage like this and they're going to be awed, right? They're going to be amazed. I hope you are too. But my hope is, is that after taking Bio 182, you're going to be better equipped to view what is ultimately an ecological interaction like this, like you just saw between a jaguar and a caiman. As a scientist, specifically as a biologist. As a biologist, we always view nature through an eco-evolutionary lens. We think about life across biological scales, from the level of the genes, from the genetic scale, to the organismal, to the ecological. But biology, like all science, begins with careful observation. Did you notice that this individual cat here is wearing a GPS collar? 
So I spent a number of years of my life, uh, both radio and GPS instrumenting wild animals, and we'll talk about that later in the year. But science, good science, always starts with careful observation. And then at its heart, it's about asking questions. So Biology 182 is structured around five units. The first, Unit 1, is called the nature of science. So in this first unit, we're going to recognize science as more than just an ever-increasing collection of facts. We're going to instead recognize science as a process, as a tool. It's actually the best tool that humans have for understanding what we are and where we come from. So the first thing that I found really remarkable about that video is just how comfortable jaguars are in the water. I mean, it talks about them being able to dive for 30 seconds. You can see here this jaguar is underwater and it clearly has its eyes open, fixated on the prey. They can consume prey underwater. What? So I thought cats didn't like water. Have you ever tried to give a house cat a bath? <laughs> it's not pretty. So this behavioral difference between house cats and jaguars is really only understood when viewed through an evolutionary lens. So hence, unit two in Bio 182, we will focus on evolution. So in short, jaguars live in warm, tropical environments. So those individual cats that ventured into the water, they were rewarded with large-bodied, calorically rich prey items like giant rodents known as capybara or the caimans, right? Those individuals that went into the water and secured these big prey items they were more likely to survive, more likely to survive and reproduce and pass along those genes and teach their kittens about hunting in the water. Whereas your domesticated house cat, they evolved from small bodied European wild cats. European wild cats, they live in temperate, cold, temperate regions where venturing into a stream or a lake, that could mean hypothermia, that could mean death. In our third unit, we will explore the history of life on planet Earth. And I'm not talking about the minuscule span of recorded human history over the past 10,000 years or so. I'm thinking about deep time from the formation of planet Earth some 4.5 billion years ago to the origins of microbial life, the evolution of multicellularity, an explosion of animal body plants some 450 million years ago to the rise of mammals. Did you know that the jaguar is one of five members of the genus Panthera? This is the genus that has the big cats the African lions, the snow leopards, the tigers, the cheetahs. So during the Pleistocene, not that long ago, there were actually many more large cats, including living here in North America. There was a massive American lion seen here on the left. There was Smilodon, the famed saber-toothed cat. Maybe you've had the chance to go to La Brea Tar Pits and check out all those Smilodon skulls. There was even an American cheetah. Ever wonder why those pronghorn antelope run so fast across the Sonoran Desert? They evolved to run away from American cheetahs. Several of these species, like Smilodon, they coexisted with the first peoples of North America. Native Americans and Smilodons undoubtedly interacted. Smilodon didn't even go extinct until 10,000 years ago. Next, I ask, when you watched that video, did you notice where that jaguar bit the caiman? So that was not an accident. 
That was a very precise bite, meant to surgically pierce between those bony scoots. That was undoubtedly a technique learned through trial and error, or taught from mother to kitten. In our fourth unit, we'll be learning about structure and function, about how the morphology or the form of a structure can inform the trained biologist about its function, about its job, what it does. So the jaguar has the most powerful bite of any of the big cats, 2,000 pounds per square inch, twice as powerful as its larger cousin, the tiger. Why? Because of this incredible muscle mass here and here, which provides it with uh, incredible bite force. So I wanted to take a moment and show you a feline skull. So hopefully you can see this on your monitor. So this is a bobcat skull. Okay, It's not a jaguar, but it is uh, in the family Felidae. It is the cats. Okay, And so not only does the jaguar have incredible muscle mass up here, in its uh, jaw muscles that connects to the skull right here. But the other thing about cats is they have a compressed rostrum. So this is going to give the cats a uh, very powerful bite force. And the reason why is if we think about this lower jaw right here as a lever and where the lower jaw articulates with the skull right here. That's the fulcrum. So this would be uh, a third class lever, okay? And because here's the load right here where the uh, jaguar is biting the caiman, um, and because that load is so close to the fulcrum, it gives this uh, lever particular power. So you couple the short uh, jaw with the incredible muscle mass, and cats are true predators. They are really the ultimate terrestrial predators. If you compare that to, this is a coyote skull, okay, and you can see the lower jaw now is going to be considerably longer, right? So this lever is not going to be able to move as much load. This bite force is not going to be as powerful. The last thing I wanted to point out to you, this is an American alligator. So not a caiman, but close. Um, got this from Louisiana here. And the reason why that the caiman bites at the base of the skull right in here, right, is not only to get this long canine tooth in between those scoots, but it's specifically trying to pierce the spinal cord, right, that large uh, nervous cord, that large um, nervous tissue uh, that's running from the small brain of the caiman. If you watch that video closely, you notice that as soon as the jaguar bites hold of the caiman, it just goes limp because the spinal cord has been severed. Lastly, some of you may be asking, are caimans of this size, are they rare in the Pantanal in Brazil? Uh, could this, this animal that was depredated, the prey, could it have been a female? And remember, the crocodilians are different than most reptiles because they care for their young. If this female had offspring, will those offspring survive? And what about that individual jaguar? Is she a female? Is she more likely to have a larger litter of kittens because she's able to catch and bring caiman prey back to her kittens? Are her kittens more likely to survive because of this prey resource? 
So these are the kinds of questions that a wildlife ecologist like myself asks, and we're going to get into wildlife ecology quite a bit in the coming lectures. In our last unit, specifically, we'll hone in on population ecology, and we'll reflect on concepts like predator-prey dynamics. So I ask you, are you ready to join me on this intellectual adventure? I hope so. Uh, I do want you to know that at the end of the week, uh, you'll get an assessment every week. And one of the questions on your first assessment, I'll ask you to identify the five units in Biology 182 in your course. And they are Unit 1, the nature of science, which you'll start next. Unit 2, evolution. Three, the history of life on planet Earth. Four, structure and function and five, ecology. And with that, I welcome you to the class. I hope that you've been entertained and will continue to be entertained. And most importantly, I hope that each of you grows as a biologist. Thank you for your time.